What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kelly Matthews. Today, we're going to talk all things deadlifting. I'm going to walk you through your form, different stances, setup, and common mistakes. Let's do it. We're going to talk about the conventional stance deadlift first. This is how you'll see most people deadlift. You also will see people in a sumo stance, which we'll talk about second. For a conventional stance, your feet are going to start about hips width distance apart. From there, you kind of just want to let your arms hang by your sides and then hinge your hips back. And wherever your hands end up on the bar, that's probably about the ideal spacing for your hands to grip the bar. When we come into position, you want to think about pushing your hips back and bending into your knees. This is not an RDL, so you don't want your knees to be almost straight. You do want to get a decent bend. And depending on the length of your femurs and the length of your tibias, your stance is going to look different based on that. So some people will be sitting really low. Some people, their hips will be a little bit higher. Once I come into position, I have a couple options for grips. Overhand grip, where both of my palms will face in toward me, or a mixed grip where one palm will face out, one palm will face in, this will give you a stronger grip. So if you feel like you're losing your grip on the bar, you may wanna play around with mixed grip or adding some wrist straps, which we'll cover a little bit later in the video. Once we're ready to go, you're gonna start at the top and I want you to think about pulling yourself down into your position. So unlike the squat, we don't have an eccentric loading phase of this exercise, which means we're just pulling the bar up off the ground. We're just like raw dogging it off the ground. So what you need to think about doing is activating on your way down so that you actually have a little bit of that mind muscle connection before you start. So push your hips back, bend your knees, feel your glutes and your hamstrings come to the party a little bit. Find your grip. This is really important. You're gonna take a big breath in, hold that breath in as you pull the bar up, and then you can either exhale at the top or exhale as you drop the bar, depends on your preference. So big breath in. As you can see between reps, if I'm doing multiple reps, I do what's called a hip pump where I kind of lift my hips and reload. That's kind of a way for me to like eccentrically load before I start the deadlift. I find that to be really helpful. The breath work is something that everybody should get under their belt as they start deadlifting. And that goes for if you're deadlifting the bar or if you're deadlifting your one rep max. So again, before you start, it's a big inhale, a brace through your belly, like you're trying to you know, create a really strong core Hold that breath in, and then you can exhale as you come up to the top. And that's gonna protect your back, it's gonna make your lift stronger. And we'll talk about using lifting belts as a tool to increase that intra-abdominal pressure, which will help you lift heavier. As you're coming up from the bottom of your deadlift, the biggest thing I want you to think about is pushing the floor away. I think a lot of times when we're approaching the deadlift, we think of it as a pull. And you'd be surprised what your mindset will do to the way that you approach the exercise. So if you're thinking about pulling, naturally, you're probably going to pull more with your arms instead of thinking about really driving through your legs. So think, push the floor away and push your head straight up through the ceiling. Okay. And then with your upper body, you're not always going to have a perfectly flat back or neutral spine, as they say. You're gonna see some people round a lot as they deadlift, and that not, might not be the right thing for you, but as you get heavier and heavier into your deadlifts, you'll find that like perfect form just doesn't exist. You have to find the best position for you where you can find the best leverage to lift the most weight. So generally speaking, we wanna think about keeping a relatively neutral spine or a flat back. But if you get a little bit of round, it's totally fine, okay? It's not gonna break your back. Um, let's go through a working set, and then I'm gonna talk to you about sumo stance, and then we're gonna talk about some equipment and common mistakes. You also have 
have the option to take a sumo stance, which is gonna be a wider stance with your toes turned out. You'll hear a lot of gym bros say that you're cheating. If you do sumo stance, this is not the case at all. You wanna find the stance that's strongest for you. One thing to think about is why are you deadlifting? If you're deadlifting to lift as heavy as possible, you wanna just find your strongest stance. If you're deadlifting to train your hamstrings, train your glutes, train your adductors, then that's a different story because what we're looking at when you sumo deadlift is a lot more squatty than when you do a conventional stance. So essentially, if you're sumo deadlifting and you're squatting and they looked really similar, you're gonna end up training the same pattern multiple times. So you may want to adjust your exercise selection or your stance based on what your goal is for your deadlift. But today we're talking about just lifting as heavy as we can. So for the sumo stance, you're gonna turn your toes out as much as is comfortable for you. You wanna make sure that you can get a good amount of leverage. Some people will go real wide, some people less wide. Again, a lot of this is just what feels most comfortable for you, but all the other cues are gonna be the same. So your hips are gonna go back, you're gonna bend into your knees, you're gonna take a big breath in, your hands will fall right in front of your shoulders, how they naturally hang. The difference here is they're gonna be inside of your feet instead of outside of your feet. And then from there, you're gonna pull up. All right, let's talk about our equipment. First thing you need to know is proper footwear. We need a non-compressive sole. So any kind of running shoe, anything with a thick sole is not going to be ideal for deadlifting. A, you're adding a deficit. You're basically making yourself lift the bar further and you're also not allowing your foot to really feel the floor and generate as much strength and force as you could if you had a flat shoe. So. I wear Converse. You could also wear like a deadlifting slipper. You'll see people wear, they're like a Velcro shoe. Um, any flat sole shoe like a Metcon or something of that like similar nature that you see people wear for CrossFit will be a good fit as well. You could also go barefoot. It's entirely up to you. Other pieces of equipment that you may want to invest in as you get into your deadlifting journey. One is great to have no matter what lifting straps. These are Versa grips. These are a little bit more expensive than your regular lifting straps, but the regular ones you can get on Amazon for like 10 or 15 bucks. These will help if your grip strength is failing you. So if you're doing higher rep ranges or you're going really heavy weight, you may want to use some straps because we don't want to be limited by our grip strength. So if you're able to lift more with your legs, but your grip is limiting you, put the straps on. It's gonna help you get stronger. The next thing on that same vein is gonna be chalk. This is liquid chalk. You'll also see like real chalk that's like powdery. This you put on your hands and it's gonna help you grip the bar easier. In a powerlifting competition, you are not able to use straps, okay? So you're gonna need to be able to lift the bar. You can use chalk though. So getting in the habit of using chalk as much as you can. When that doesn't work for you anymore, you can throw the straps on. The last thing is gonna be your weightlifting belt. I get so many questions about when should I start using a weightlifting belt? What kind should I use? And if you're brand new in your fitness journey, you don't need a belt. You wanna get a lot of reps before you even consider putting on a weightlifting belt. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give you some compression around your trunk. And when you breathe, when this is really tight on your belly, when you take a breath in, it allows you to increase that intra-abdominal pressure. It almost acts like a surrogate ab, almost. So you'll find that when you put the belt on, you're gonna be able to lift a lot more weight. But like I said, if you're newer to your fitness journey, throwing on a belt right away is actually going to be a disservice to you. So a general rule of thumb is if you can't deadlift, more than your body weight, don't put a belt on yet. But the way we're gonna use this is when you take that breath, when we're here, you're just gonna take a big inhale, you'll feel your belly expand all the way around like a balloon and you wanna hold that there. So I'm gonna take a big breath in. <sighs> 
and being able to push against that belt is gonna allow me to lift a little bit heavier. This is a lever belt. There's also Velcro belts. There's also ones that you just buckle like a normal belt. And you kind of just have to find the one that you like the best. I prefer the lever, um, but you wanna make sure that there is a level of thickness to it. A really thin belt is not going to give you much help. Let's talk about common mistakes I see in the deadlift. The first one is going to be not extending at the knee and the hip at the same time or early knee extension. And what that looks like is coming up from the bottom. The first thing that's going to happen is your butt's going to stick up in the air. So when I try and pull this bar up, I get here and then I basically just turn it into an RDL. Okay. The goal with a deadlift, it's not gonna be perfect every time, but your goal should be to stand up to the point where your knees and your hips extend at the same time, okay? So what that looks like in practice is driving straight up to a stand. That's really all you need to think about. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Just think about standing straight up and sending your head through the ceiling. Second mistake I see is people don't accelerate through the lift. So you feel the bar come off the ground and you're like, oh, I did it, and you quit. <laughs> this is something that will, as you get heavier, cause you to fail more and more lifts, especially a one rep max. So you wanna think about accelerating all the way through the lift, okay? So if the bar is sticky on the ground, give it a second, keep pulling, don't quit on it. And once it lifts, then you really have to accelerate and push as fast as you can. Every single deadlift you do on the way up outside of tempo work, you're gonna wanna push as fast as you can, regardless of how heavy the weight is. The last one is starting in a lax position. This is like one of the worst things you can do. Not only is it gonna limit you with how much weight you can lift, but you're gonna end up probably with some sore joints. So what that looks like is starting here with no tension in my upper body, not thinking about my breath, and just like yanking like this. Before you start, you wanna take the tension, you wanna put some tension into the bar. So there's a little space between the plate and the bar. So it doesn't, you know, slide on there completely snug. So the, the bar can move around. What you wanna do is take that movement out before you start. So here, I'm almost acting like I'm gonna lift it before I start. So you'll see that bar gets really tight with the plates. And that will just allow you to start in a much stronger position and you're not gonna like jam up your shoulders and get stuck on the ground. If you ever decide to do a powerlifting meet, the one thing you need to know is the judges are just gonna judge when you get to full lockout at the top. So as soon as they give you the go ahead, you can lift anytime you want. You're gonna come all the way up, lock your knees out, lock your hips out. They'll say down, you bring the bar down to the floor and that's it. All right, y'all, that's it for the deadlift today. I hope you had fun, I know I did. If you wanna see more fitness content from me, please subscribe to my channel or you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Kelly L. Matthews. I'll see you guys soon.